Hey guys! I'm Irene, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this Penguin Mother's Day card. There's a mother penguin, a baby penguin making a Mother's Day meal, and a baby penguin giving the mother flowers. The quilling pieces we'll make are a mother penguin, two baby penguins, some accessories, and two hearts. Then we'll prepare the card and background for assembly. This is the second card in my Penguin Quilling Card series. I've shown a Valentine's Day card, and I'll be showing penguin card ideas for other events and holidays. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe and bell button so you don't miss the next videos. These are the materials for making the card. I usually use three widths of quilling paper in my cards. I'll refer to a width of 3 eighths of an inch as wide, 1 eighth of an inch as standard, and 2 millimeters as narrow. Let's get started. First, we'll make the quilling pieces for the mother penguin. For the face, start by making a tight circle with a 48 inch strip of standard white quilling paper. You may have to join a couple of strips together in order to get the right length, and you can glue them together like this. Because this is for the face, I like to coil the beginning segment a couple of times with a pin. Then I use my fingers to re-roll the strip to eliminate that center hole. Make a tight circle and glue the end. Then glue a 24 inch strip of standard black quilling paper next to the white end, coil it, and glue the end. Penguins have a black patterning on their face. We'll be cutting this out of a 3 quarter inch strip of wide black quilling paper. Pencil on black is hard to see on camera, so for demonstration purposes, I'll use light blue paper. Trace the face on the quilling paper. Cut this out and place it on the face. Mark the inner rims of the black circle. Then measure and mark 1 8 of an inch at the center. I like the domes on the two sides to come up to about 3 16 of an inch. Now we can draw the two domes using the markers. Cut the domes out and we have the face patterning. Carefully erase any pencil marks. Glue the patterning to the face. To make the beak, we first want to make a loose circle using a 2 inch strip of narrow yellow quilling paper. To make the loose circle, first form a tight circle and then let it expand until it's about 1 8 of an inch in diameter. When making the loose circles for shaping, the result is nicer if the layers are evenly spaced. Sometimes I'll re-roll it or use a pin to try to even out the layers a bit. Glue the end down. We can then form a marquee shape by pinching both sides of the circle. One of the sides should be lined up with the glued end so that the glued end is less visible. Glue the beak on the center of the black patterning. To make the smiling eyes, we want to first cut a strip of standard black quilling paper in half lengthwise so that we get a strip that is 1 16 inch wide. Cut two segments that are 3 16 of an inch long and fold them in half. Glue them onto the face. To make the blushing cheeks, cut 1.5 inch strips of narrow pale pink quilling paper and form tight circles. I like to re-roll these with my fingers to eliminate that center hole. Glue them onto the face. For the bow, we need three 2 inch strips of narrow pink quilling paper. We'll first make the two bow loops. For each bow loop, create a loose circle that is about 5 30 seconds of an inch in diameter. Make sure the layers of the circle are evenly spaced. Then create a bunny ear shape by denting the middle with your fingernail. Make the second bow loop. Glue the two bow loops together into a bow shape. Next, create a tight circle using the third strip. Glue it onto the center of the bow. Glue the bow onto the face, and we're done with the mother's face. The belly is made similarly to the base of the face, but with larger measurements. Make a tight circle with a 60 inch strip of standard white quilling paper 
and a 36 inch strip of standard black quilling paper. Try to eliminate the center hole. For the arms, make loose circles using 7 inch strips of standard black quilling paper. The circles should be about 3 eighths of an inch in diameter. To shape the arms, I'm forming a marquee shape, but one side is about two times as long as the other side. For the feet, make loose circles with 4 inch strips of standard yellow quilling paper. The circle should be about 1 quarter inch in diameter. Then we want to shape the circles into half circles. We can assemble some parts of the mother penguin now. Glue the mother's face onto the belly, then glue the feet onto the belly. I like to assemble the arms at the end when arranging the card, so I'll leave them separate for now. Next, let's make the baby penguins. Making them is similar to making the mother penguin, but with smaller measurements. For the face, make a tight circle with a 24 inch strip of standard white quilling paper and a 12 inch strip of standard black quilling paper. Try to eliminate that center hole. For the face patterning, start with a half inch strip of wide black quilling paper. Pencil on black is hard to see on camera, so for demonstration purposes, I'll use light blue paper. Cut the 3 eighths of an inch width down to a quarter inch. Trace the face on the quilling paper. Cut this out and place it on the face. Mark the inner rims of the black circle. Then measure and mark 1 16 of an inch at the center. I like the domes on the two sides to come up to about 1 8 of an inch. Next, we can draw the two domes using the markers. Cut the domes out and we have the face patterning. Carefully erase any pencil marks. Glue the patterning to the face. For the beak, make a loose circle with a 1 inch strip of narrow yellow quilling paper. Then, form a marquee shape by pinching the two sides of the circle. Glue the beak onto the center of the black patterning. To make the smiling eyes, cut a strip of standard black quilling paper in half lengthwise so that we get a strip that is 1 16 inch wide. Cut two segments that are 1 8 of an inch long and fold them in half. Glue them onto the face. To make the blushing cheeks, cut 3 quarter inch strips of narrow pale pink quilling paper and form tight circles. I like to re-roll these with my fingers to eliminate that center hole. Glue them onto the face. The belly of the baby penguin is made differently. Prepare a 42 inch strip of standard gray quilling paper and cut fringes into it. Leave at least one millimeter from the edge when making the cuts. Make a tight circle using the fringe strip and when the glue has dried, open up the fringes a bit. The fringes help create that fuzzy look of baby penguins. For the arms, make loose circles using 3 inch strips of standard gray quilling paper. The circle should be about 1 quarter inch in diameter. We want to shape the baby penguin's arms a bit differently compared to the mother penguin's arms. For the baby penguins, form rounded triangular shapes. For the feet, make loose circles using 2 inch strips of standard yellow quilling paper. The circle should be about 5 30 seconds of an inch in diameter. Then we want to shape the circles into half circles. We have made the quilling pieces for one baby penguin. Go ahead and make quilling pieces for the second baby penguin. We'll start assembling them after we've made some accessories for them. For the baby penguin that's making a Mother's Day meal, we'll make a pan, a fish, and a chef hat. For the baby penguin gifting flowers to the mother, we'll make a bouquet. To make the pan handle, take a half inch strip of wide black quilling paper and make a tight circle. To make the pan body, take a 36 inch strip of standard black quilling paper and make a tight circle. Try to eliminate the center hole. Glue the pan handle to the pan body and we've made the pan. For the fish's body, make a loose circle using a 3 inch strip of standard orange quilling paper. The circle should be about 3 16 of an inch in diameter. Shape it into a teardrop first by pinching the glued end down. Then slightly pinch down the other end to make a slight V shape for the head. 
For the fish's tail, make a small loose circle using a 1 inch strip of standard orange quilling paper. Create a bunny ear shape by denting the middle with your fingernail. Glue the fish tail onto the fish body. For the chef's hat, start by taking a 1.25 inch strip of wide ivory quilling paper and cutting the 3 eighths of an inch width down to 1 quarter inch. Erase the pencil marks. This will be the base of the hat. Then, prepare 5 thin strips by cutting 1.25 inch strips of standard ivory quilling paper. These will be the poofs of the hat. Lay the wide strip vertically and glue the 5 thin strips horizontally perpendicular to it. I like to start by gluing one thin strip at the middle. Then I glue two thin strips on each side of it. The five thin strips should be laying next to each other. Coil each of the five thin strips until the circle meets the edge of the wide strip. Flip the work around and fold each coil over the edge of the wide strip. Glue the coils down just above the edge of the wide strip. Each coil should be about the same size. If you look at the work from the side, you'll see each circle coming over the edge of the wide strip. You'll see that if you curve the wide strip, it starts to form a chef hat shape. Set the chef hat strip aside and we'll put this hat on the baby penguin later. For each flower, first prepare a 3 inch strip of standard dark pink quilling paper. Then, take a 3 quarter inch strip of standard yellow quilling paper and cut it in half lengthwise so that you get a strip that is 1 16th inch wide. Erase any pencil marks. This will be the center of the flower. Glue the thinner yellow strip to the top side of the dark pink strip. Then, cut fringes into the dark pink strip from the bottom side. Leave at least 1 millimeter when making the cuts. Once the entire dark pink strip has been fringed, Make a tight circle starting from the side with the yellow strip so that the yellow becomes the center of the flower. Glue the end down. Once the glue has dried, open up the fringes and we've made a flower. Make three of these flowers. The bouquet stems are made by twisting a strip of standard leaf green quilling paper around a pin. If there is a pin head, make sure it's facing upwards so that it's out of the way. Wrap the paper around the pin at a slanted angle. Whenever you run out of length on a pin, move the coil downwards a bit and continue wrapping. Once we have a coil that is about 3 inches long, cut it off. Then cut it into 3 segments that are each 1 inch long. Now we can assemble some parts of the baby penguins. For the baby penguin preparing the Mother's Day meal, we want to attach the chef hat. Wrap the chef hat strip around the baby penguin's face so that you can see which parts need glue. Apply thin layers of glue to the hat and glue the hat onto the face. Glue the face onto the belly, then glue the feet onto the belly. Leave the arms separate for now. We'll glue them down when arranging the card. For the baby penguin gifting the flowers, we can just glue the face, belly, and feet together, leaving the arms separate for now. Assemble the bouquet together by gluing the three stems together first. Then glue the flowers onto the top. We can trim the bouquet later when we're assembling the card. Next we'll make two hearts, one large and one small. To make the halves of the large heart, make loose circles using 3 inch strips of standard dark pink quilling paper. The circle should be about 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. Form teardrop shapes by pinching the glued end down. Glue the teardrops together to form a heart shape. The halves of the smaller heart are made similarly, but we'll use 2.5 inch strips of standard pink quilling paper to make loose circles that are 5 30 seconds of an inch in diameter. Form teardrop shapes and glue the teardrops together to form a heart shape. We finished making the quilling pieces. We can now prepare the card and background. For the base of the card, prepare a 7 inch by 11 inch piece of sky blue cardstock. Fold it along the width to create a card that is 7 inches by 5.5 inches. This card we're making is horizontal and opens from the bottom. For a layer of snow on the bottom half of the card, prepare a 3 inch by 7 inch piece of white paper. Next, we'll make the igloo. To make the igloo dome, prepare a 3.75 inch by 5 inch piece of light blue cardstock. From the bottom, measure and mark 3 16ths of an inch on the left and right sides. This will help us draw a curved bottom for the igloo. 
Then mark the centers of the top, bottom, left and right sides. From the left and right sides, make marks 1 8 of an inch from the edge. This will help guide the shape of the dome on the sides. Now we can draw the dome using the markers. Connect the center of the top edge down to the side markers and then down to the markers near the bottom. Then connect the markers near the bottom to the center of the bottom edge to form a curved bottom for the dome. Cut the dome out and erase any pencil marks. Then we'll make a template for the igloo window. Take a 1.5 inch by 1.75 inch piece of any paper. From the bottom, measure and mark 1 8 of an inch on the left and right sides. Then mark the centers of the top, bottom, left, and right sides. From the left and right sides, make marks 1 16 of an inch from the edge. Now we can draw the dome shape. We'll use this to trace out a window on the igloo dome later. Now we'll make the igloo door. Start with a 2 inch by 1.25 inch piece of medium blue cardstock. We don't need the bottom of the door to be curved, so we'll directly mark the centers of the top, bottom, left, and right sides. From the left and right sides, make marks 1 16 of an inch from the edge. Now we can draw the dome using the markers. This piece is the hole for the igloo door. Next, we'll make a rim for the igloo door. Prepare a 2.25 inch by 1.75 inch piece of sky blue cardstock. We want to trace around the igloo door hole piece from the previous step, leaving a 1 quarter inch border around. Glue the hole piece onto the rim piece. Make sure the glue reaches the entire bottom edge of the dome because we'll be making a cut there later. Then we can create the igloo door dome. Start with a 2 and 3 8 inch by 2.25 inch piece of light blue cardstock. Align the rim piece at the top left and trace the left side and bottom left corner. Then align the rim piece at the bottom right and trace the right side and bottom left corner. Connect what we've traced on the left and right sides using straight lines. We'll need to draw a line at the bottom left corner and a line at the top. Align the rim piece at the bottom right again and you can make adjustments to the shape you've drawn. Glue the rim piece at the bottom right. Make sure the glue reaches the entire bottom edge of the dome because we'll be making a cut there next. Once the glue has dried on the layers of the igloo door, we want to create a slant for the bottom. Measure and mark 1 8 of an inch from the bottom on the right side. Then draw a straight line from the inner bottom left corner to that marker. Make a cut along this line. Erase any pencil marks. Now that we've prepared the igloo dome, the door, and a template for the window, we can assemble the igloo together. Arrange the door and the window template. For the door, the outer bottom left corner should match up with the bottom edge of the igloo dome. Glue the door onto the igloo first. Then trace out where you want the window on the igloo dome. Cut the window out. To get a nice background for the window hole, prepare a 2 inch by 2.25 inch piece of medium blue cardstock. Now we can arrange the snow and igloo pieces onto the card. To prevent the sky blue rim of the igloo door from blending into the card, we need a layer of white snow to come up between them. Draw in some curves at the top edge of the snow piece for a more realistic look. Cut these curves out. Erase any pencil marks and glue the snow piece onto the card. Next, we want to glue the window hole background to the igloo on the left edge. We don't want to glue it all the way because we need to insert a baby penguin into it. So flip the igloo over and glue the medium blue background on one edge of the window. Then we can glue the igloo onto the card by the bottom edge only. This will help it stay in place while we're arranging the penguins, but still make it easy for us to insert a baby penguin into the window. I have a problem here because the light blue cardstock is a bit too similar in color to the sky blue background. I'll take a piece of narrow white quilling paper and twist it, similar to what we did with the bouquet stems. Then I'll use this twisted white quilling paper to outline the igloo dome and igloo door. I'll apply glue on the igloo edge in segments and place the outline. And the card and background is done. Finally, we're ready to assemble the penguins onto the card. Arrange the bodies of the penguins so that you can get an idea of how the card will look. We want to insert the baby penguin that's making a Mother's Day meal into the window first. When you're happy with its position, put glue on the back of its face and belly. Now while the glue on the baby penguin is still wet, try to quickly arrange its arms and how it will be holding the pan and the fish. 
I like to have all of the elements within the window. The pan is quite big, so I found I needed to move the penguin's body a bit. Glue down the arms, pan, and fish for this baby penguin. It's more stable if you glue the top of the pan to the card as well. Next, we'll arrange the mother penguin and the baby penguin gifting flowers, focusing on the positioning of the arms. I like to place the mother penguin's right arm very close to the flowers on the bouquet so that it looks like the baby penguin is handing it to the mother. Once you're sure about the mother's arm positions, you can glue them onto the belly. Then I'll trim the bouquet a bit to clean up the top and shorten it. For the baby penguin holding the bouquet, I'll glue the left arm to the belly first. I'll glue the bouquet onto the baby penguin's belly. Then I'll glue the right arm so that it looks like it's supporting the bouquet. Glue the mother penguin and baby penguin gifting the flowers. Arrange the two hearts the way you like and glue them down. Now that all the penguins have been glued down, go ahead and glue the rest of the igloo window background and igloo dome. And this penguin Mother's Day quilling card is done! As I mentioned before, I'll be showing more penguin card ideas for other events and holidays this year. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe and bell button below. Hope to see you in my next video!